morning. Are you ready for chapel? Then let us all stand. I ask everybody to be quiet, to bow their heads, and close their eyes as I lead us in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, our Lord Jesus prayed that all who believe in him may become one. Take away the hatred and anger from our hearts. Teach us to love and treat one another as sisters and brothers, and help us to celebrate the rich and different gifts that each one brings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We open our eyes and sing our opening song.
letter to the Corinthians. The body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. If, if it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If, there were, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eyes cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we, we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. With our, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but, that's, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is is honored every part rejoices with it good morning everybody i'm dr frankincense welcome to my laboratory i have just finished my latest creation the perfect body this body is made up of the best parts from other bodies carefully attached so they will all work together in perfect harmony Oh look, the body is waking up. Dr. Frankincense, I have something to say. Just a minute, who's talking? It is I, the foot. I'm not very happy. I don't like being the foot. I want it to be the hand. I get, I get very dirty and smell bad sometimes. I get covered up with shoes and socks and I get tired of having all the weight put on me. Hey, just a minute. I'm the hand, the most important. A body is helpless without me. I can do all sorts of very important things. Well, as the ear, I'm really important. But I admit, I'm not as important as a hand. Why didn't I get to be a hand that can move around? I just stay in one place, hardly noticed. So, and sometimes I'm prone to infections. There's not much I can do now. It's too late. Hey, what's happening now? I'm the eye talking. Doctor, I just wanted to let you know and everybody know that I'm very glad to be an eye. Everybody knows they are the most important and beautiful part. No, 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 no. You've got it all wrong. I, the brain, am the most important part, even though you can't see me. After all, I control all these other features that are arguing about who is the best. But doctor, I do have a complaint. Everything facing front. Why didn't you put one eye in the back? And the ear could be somewhere else than the head where they aren't so exposed. All of you, stop complaining. I need time to think about this. It might mess up your chance for survival if I do any more rearranging. I can't believe it. If these body parts don't work together the way I planned it, then what can I do? Instead of the perfect body, I think I've created a monster. Wow, 
what a crazy story that is. But that's what Paul wrote in the Bible about body parts not being happy with what they were. They all wanted to be the one that gets the most attention. I think it's a fun story, but did you ever feel that way? Somebody else is getting more attention than you are? Ah, that's the way life is. Sometimes that happens. But you know, we all aren't going to be the top person that gets the attention. Not all going to be the frontline person. Some people are going to be the, the underlying person that gets things done. We were all given talents by God. What's a talent? I've talked about them before. A talent is something that you can do well. Usually it's something you're born with, but you have to recognize it and develop it. So some people have great leadership skills. They're the kind who might grow up to be the president or the head of something. Uh, we're not all gonna be the president. Some of us are gonna be the workers and some of you are very skilled in, in the work that you do or that you learn to do. You can learn to be very skilled and follow well. It takes all kinds to make this world work. So you have to recognize where your talents are and do your best to develop them and use them for the good of all. Now about body parts, I think probably the most important one is the heart. Can you see my heart? I wouldn't be here if I didn't have a heart pumping in there. The heart is very important, but it doesn't work just by itself. It works with the lungs and the brain. And it just keeps on going and pumping regularly as long as we're alive. So you have to recognize again, which part are you? A super important one, maybe that isn't even seen. We can all improve the skills that God has given us. We must always remember that. But it's important to be a team worker, like the heart, working with the lungs and the brains. Teamwork is what makes things work. So that's what's really important. Use the skill God has given you to work with others to make things work wonderfully well. That's the way sports teams work. That's the way all companies work. That's the way the school works. Everything, and the government, it all have, they all have to work together. So some have leadership skills and some have the working skills. I wanted to give an example to you using my youngest son, Gregory. Gregory was born with multiple heart defects. That means there were some things about his heart that didn't develop properly when he was uh, growing inside me. And he had to have corrective surgery. He had the first one when he was a baby or he wouldn't have even grown up to have uh, gone to school. And then he had another one in his teens. Now, Greg loved to be involved and to do things. One of his talents was music, so he could work good at that. And, and that one didn't take uh, teamwork. That one was one he could develop on his own. But he also loved sports. And in middle school, he wanted to be on the volleyball team. But he wasn't strong and healthy enough for that, so he couldn't get the doctor to sign permission for him to be in the volleyball team. So do you know what he decided to do? He joined the team by being the ball boy. That means he had to carry the bag with the balls in it and be in charge of, of them uh, throughout the game and make sure they got there and that they brought them back and other little background things that he did. And he enjoyed it because he was involved with the sport team. He would rejoice with them when they made good points and when they won. And just being a part of that group was important to him. But he knew that he wasn't going to be one that was hitting the ball and making points. He was just the background worker to make, make everything go more smoothly. So remember, God has given you a talent, maybe many talents. Do you need to recognize them and develop them and find your place in the teamwork of how things work. 
to make everything go well. Remember, you are important. You count very much, whether it is seen or unseen. Them, we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Please join me and let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. It is time now to bless and greet our birthday celebrants who are celebrating their birthdays on January 23 to 29. Please stand so we can pray for you. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sad. Raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace be with them all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May you have a super fun and super special birthday. Happy birthday. And now, let me give you the blessing. May the God who created everything that is good and beautiful bless and protect you as you go about learning new things and doing good things today. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord and let us sing our closing song. <laughs>